Hey guys, let's take a look at uh, what's called linear in intercepts. And again, the word linear uh, refers to the first four letters of the word lines. And first off, let's take a look at a graph. Um, and you should, again, by looking at this equation, of this linear equation here, you should look at that and be able to kind of almost visualize that in your head, even without even drawing it. But uh, there is your y-intercept, which is that's going to be 2 right there. Your slope is negative, which means the line points down to the right. And uh, it's, you know, 2 up and 3 over. So you can start right at this line. Doesn't, you can go up or down. Doesn't matter. You can just say let's go down 2. And we'll go 3 over. 1, 2, 3. 1, down 2, down 2. 1, 2, 3. And then there's your line. Okay. Every once in a while, I'd do a halfway decent line. Okay, that was just halfway decent. Anyhow. Okay, there you go. All right? Um, what you're gonna, they're going to ask you to do now is they are going to give you the line on a, on a graph and they're going to go, you're going to go backwards. In other words, they give you the line and you give us, you give them the equation of the line, which, you know, we, we'll do this really quickly. Um, shouldn't take too long. Now, one thing that might bother you is you go, okay, well on this line, I can see what the Y intercept is on this one. I can't see it. It's, it's way up there. I mean, off the screen, I can't even see a thing. It's okay. We'll take care of that. Okay. First thing you want to do is, because these can be kind of intimidating. And by the way, this works for any algebra class you take in college or, or anything like that. Uh, you, you can, they say something about, oh, the equation of the line, the blah, you just don't even worry about it. Just go. Y equals slope X plus Y intercept. Oop, that was my news there. Okay. Um, so all you need to do is you need to find out the slope and you need to find out the Y intercept. Okay, well, let's find the slope first. You could probably figure out, but you tell me, what about this slope is obvious since the line is pointing down? Okay, it's negative, right? So it's going to be negative something x and then plus the y-intercept, right? Well, to find the slope, you can just pick any two points you want and go, you know, uh, well, oh, let's say it's this point and let's say uh, that looks like that's around the corner there. Okay. So I'm going to go down one, two, three, four, five, six, and then one. So six over one is just six. So there's my slope, right? Now the question is, how in the heck are we going to get this y-intercept? I mean, how are we going to, I can't, you can't see that all the way up there. Okay. Well, let's focus, since that's impossible to do it that way, let's focus on this, this bottom equation. Okay. Our, our job is to look at that equation, the second one. Our job is to find the letter B, the, the actual y-intercept. The only way we can do that is if we find a value for x and we find a value for y. If those are all numbers, then you can just multiply and subtract and all that jazz and you got your answer for B, right? Okay, so how are we going to find a value for x and y? Well, look at the graph. There isn't a value for x. There is a value for x and y, excuse me. There's two of them we measured out there. Okay, probably it'd be easier to piddle with this one. Okay, and if you look at that, that's the point for zero, which means the x is four, the y is zero, right? Okay, well, just stick it in there. There it is. We say the y is zero. Doink, there it is. Negative six times x, right? What is that? x is four, okay. Okay, and then plus b. Okay, you got it. All right, so 0 equals negative 24 plus B. Well, flop that on over there. You get B is 24. So there's your equation, right? So since we figured out the B is 24, there it is. Stick it in there. And good gravy, I wouldn't be, I want to be the person to try to draw this graph. But anyway, that's the, there it is right there. That's all you got to do. Again, I, I want to encourage you. If you're ever messing with, find the equation of this line, blah, blah, in some college class, you go, ah, just do nothing, but just go y equals mx plus b, y equals slope x plus y intercept. Do it, and some stuff will pop up. Just, stuff will just start happening, all right? Okay, let's look at the second part, and this is a little bit of trigonometry. Remember transversals? Remember those? It's like, in other words, there are two, let's say, parallel lines, and they, they indicate they're parallel by putting arrows like that, right? And you go, oh, look, there's a, you know, and let's say this is, I don't know, 70 degrees here. Um, 
then they ask you, oh, what is the measure of this angle X or whatever? You go, oh, okay, well, 70. And of course, if this is 70, this is a uh, 180 degrees total. So this must be 110 degrees. And since this is the top left, well, and this is a transversal right there, then these are parallel, then the top left here is gonna, ma is gonna match the top left here. So that's also 110 degrees. Okay, knowing that, we're gonna mess with some trigonometry stuff. So grab a calculator that has your trig functions and remember how to do those because we're gonna use that to solve the next kind of problem here. So this is the kind of problem if you want to pause it for just a second, just to kind of focus <coughs> on what it is, you can do that. But I'll go ahead and read it just in case you'd like to hear it. Okay, lines one and two are parallel. So here they are, there are the arrows. Find sides A and B, okay. Now what you're gonna to wanna to do is go, okay. Um, you're gonna need, in this triangle, they're asking to find A and find B, which means you know we're gonna to have to use trig, right? Okay, so we do need to know this, uh, you know, angle P, what it is. Well, we can figure out angle P because it is the top right. In other words, this is the transversal. There you go. This is the top right angle, which will match Z. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. So Z, we can figure out what that is by simply going, okay, well, 53 plus what will give you 180 degrees because it's a straight line. So that'll be 27 degrees. This is 27 degrees, okay? Top right, which means P, will also be 27 degrees, okay? So we need to find A and B. And remember our trig functions, cosine, sine, and tangent. You'll need a calculator, and I'm getting mine right now. And uh, we're gonna look at our trig functions on our calculator at this point. And on your calculator, if it's your phone, you might have to turn it sideways to get your I have to turn mine sideways to get, you know, if I go like this, it just gives me this, you know, barely any numbers. I go like that, it gives me extra stuff and that kind of thing. Okay, that's a scientific calculator. All right, so let's take a look at, I don't know, let's find A first. What the heck, okay? So we know this is 27 degrees. And again, let's focus on the 27 degrees. Okay, well, what is A as compared to this angle right here? Is it adjacent? Is it opposite? Is it hypotenuse? Well... For the 27 degree angle, this is adjacent. Handy, I guess, right? A. Okay, so we have the A adjacent and we have the hypotenuse. Well, which one of those functions has adjacent and hypotenuse? Cosine, right? Okay, so we write over here. The cosine of 27 degrees is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, which is, this, this time it's seven, okay? What is the cosine of 27 degrees? No earthly idea. That's why I type in 27 and then cosine degrees. Okay, I got 0.891. Is that what you got? Okay, cosine of 27 is 0.891. So instead of writing this, I go 0.891 equals A over seven. Okay, and of course we cross multiply to find out what A is. So you can just multiply, just keep that in your calculator the way it is, and let's go times seven, and the answer is, I'll say 6.24. So for A, we have 6.24. Oop, and there we go. Now we need B. Now there are two ways to find B. Since this is a right triangle, you can go for that Pythagorean theorem and go 6.24 squared plus B squared equals seven squared if you want to. Or you can just, you know, use a trig function, let's just use that just for the practice, okay? So let's look at angle P, we're still dealing with angle P. What is the side B as it relates to angle P? Of course, it's the opposite, right? Okay, we have opposite, you know what? Now we have adjacent too, we could use that if we wanted to. We could use opposite or adjacent, we could use opposite hypotenuse, whatever, who cares? Let's just use opposite over hypotenuse, all right? So what's the definition of opposite over hypotenuse? What's that called? Which one of those three is that called? Opposite over hypotenuse is the sine. Okay, so we have sine of 27 is the opposite, which is B, over the hypotenuse. Okay, well, again, I have no idea what the sine of 27 degrees is. Let's just pop it in here. 27 and then sine. I get 0.454, round it up a little bit, okay. And again, you can do the same thing here. You can go over here and go, okay, I got 
five four equals b over seven. And then of course, you know, cross multiply, you just need to multiply whatever you get there times seven again. I got three point, we'll call it three point one eight. So I got three point one eight. There we go. And that is how you get A and B on one of those transposers. The only thing different you're doing on this is recognizing that, oh, the you know, the angles will match up with the uh, the below angles in exactly the order that they are. Okay, all right, let's try one more. And this time, same old thing, parallel, find M and N, okay? Well, look at angle B, that's what we need to figure out first, because we're gonna have to figure out what angle A is. To do that, we're gonna have to figure out what angle B is, because it matches exactly what angle A is. Well, B is obviously 180 degrees minus 158, which is going to be 22. Well, if that's 22, then A is 22 degrees. Okay. All right. So we'll find M and N next. Okay. Well, let's just find M first since it seems to be lonely out there a little bit. Okay. Well, let's look at it. Okay. So you tell me. It's adjacent, and we know the 90, which is the hypotenuse. Well, adjacent over hypotenuse is this, this is defined as cosine. So cosine of 22 degrees is equal to adjacent over 90. Okay? Cosine of 22, pop it in there. What'd you get? I got 0.927. Okay. So, in other words, we got 0.927 equals m over 90. And you'll get faster at this to the point where you won't even have to mess with this. You'll just see this and you'll go, oh, I'm gonna multiply 0.927 times 90, which you can do now, okay? I got 80, I'll just call it 83.4. We'll just say 83.4, that's the length of M, okay? And again, you can use Pythagorean theorem or you can just use the uh, uh, trig functions. Let's just go ahead and do that. Uh, to the 22 degree angle, this is your opposite. So opposite over hypotenuse is called sine. So we have sine of 22 degrees is what we want now. That's going to be n over 90. So in the calculator, 22 sine, what'd you get? 0.375-ish. Okay. All right. And again, times it by 90. 33.7. That's what I got. Okay. And there you go. And that's how you find the uh, angles of the, using those transversals. Okay. All right, let's do, we have uh, two, two types of problems, just A and B. So go ahead and pause it and do your uh, tryout A. Okay, again, if you don't know where to start, just write it. Y equals MX plus B. Slope, Y intercept. We got to find them. Looking at this drawing, I don't think we're going to be able to find the y-intercept. I guess if you kept going and tried to draw it, you might be able to do a good job, but you know, let's just not have the drawing thing. Slope we know is going to be positive. You see that? It's going to be positive slope. We know that. Any two points you want. How about that one and, I don't know, that's a good one right there too. Okay, so let's go up. One, two, three, four, five, and then one, two over. So okay, so at least we can go, okay, y equals five half of x plus b, okay? To find the b, we need a value for x and a value for y, right? Okay, well, I don't know. This, it doesn't matter which one. You could use this one if you want to. You could use this one if you want to. You could use that one if you want to. It doesn't matter, they'll all work. It's like magic or something, I don't know, anyway. Oh, what the heck, let's try, what is this point right here? One, two, three, four, five, six, and then one, two, three, four, six, four. Does that sound good? Okay, so in other words, x is six and the y is four. We'll just stick it right into here. So we got y is 4. 4 is 5 halves times x, which is 6, plus b. Okay. Well, 5 times 6 is good gravy. You sure we got that right? Okay, anyway. Okay, 5 times 6 is 30. Divided by 2 is 15. So 4 equals 15 plus b. All right. B is equal to 4 minus 15, or negative 11. And there we go. Okay, so there's our equation. Y is equal to 5 half X. Okay, well, uh, let's go ahead and go erase this right here. 
And uh, we got, let's see, pin is there. Oops, I'm losing it here. Okay, that's going to be negative 11. If you look at this drawing, that looks halfway reasonable, right? I mean, if you all go all the way, keep going and get, get you to negative 11, that's one good way to check to see if you're right or not. Okay, all right, go ahead and pause it and try B. Okay, they want us to find N, which means we're going to have to find this angle right here, right, at the top right. Well, if this is 114 degrees and these are parallel and that's a transversal, this is going to be 66 degrees because it adds up to 180, which means this will be 66 degrees as well, right there, okay? Well, if we find N, that of course is the opposite of this. So we have the opposite, we have the hypotenuse, so the opposite of our hypotenuse is defined as sine. So let's go sine 66 degrees is equal to N over 100. Opposite over hypotenuse. Okay, so let's pop it in our little calculator here and go 66 and then sine. All right, what'd you guys get? What is the sine of 66 degrees? I got 0.9135, all that jazz. Okay. All right, and again, if you notice, you can just go cross multiply one times in, and all you need to do is just multiply by 100. Of course, multiplying this number by 100 is a piece of cake. You just move the decimal over twice. So n is going to be 91 point, we'll call it 91.4. Okay, all right. Okay, hope that helped, and I uh, look forward to seeing you guys. Y'all take care.